Hi and welcome back to the next episode of Up The Shed. Haven't done a video for a little while guys, just been super super busy at work, but hopefully in the next coming uh, weeks or so we can get some more content out for you. Slightly different project this week, um, we're going to go out into the garden, outside in my, um, or by the front of my office I've got an apple tree that I've espaliered or tried to espalier, I'm no gardener, across the front of the, uh, the office there. Um, it's a it's about two to three years old but it has been moved around the apple tree so it's not exactly um, really healthy as such but this year it's really become inundated with a woolly aphid so I've tried home remedies I've tried store remedies to try and get rid of these what I haven't got in the garden though is any natural uh, predators for them so what I'm going to do I'm going to build something today that will hopefully invite those insects into the garden or help to and see if they can control the the aphids there um, what I'll do I'm going to grab the camera and uh, we'll go and take a quick look and then I'll get set up with a workbench outside and uh, we'll work out there so it's a nice sunny day so let's get outside okay well this is the front of my office or one end and as you can see I've got a, an apple tree now um, this has been here in this location for um, this will be its second year here um, prior to that it was in that tub for a couple of years so it's been moved around quite a bit and the, so it's not looking in the best of health but it's it's growing it's um it's surviving and as my gran always used to say it's got a 50 50 chance it either lives or it dies so um what i'm really concerned about though is obviously these uh if i can zoom in a little bit I'll get there these woolly aphids and they are everywhere it's all over it and i've tried sprays I come out here and actually pull these off um, by hand, um, it's just everywhere. So what I'm going to do is build a insect hotel today. Now the good thing about this, I don't actually see any ants over this, so it's not like the ants are um, using these for um, any sort of payoff, you know, sometimes you'll get black fly or normal aphid, sorry, you'll get um, ants that corral them and basically use them. Um, and they use each other so the aphids give off a sweet nectar they'll give some of that off as such which the ants eat and in return the ants protect them and as i say i've not seen any ants on this over the last few weeks and months that these woolly aphids have been here so uh yeah so anyway i'm gonna get me workbench set up outside today so it's uh it's not too bad it is sort of sunny ish and um, we'll get to cutting and drilling on a piece of wood that I've got and uh, we'll go from there and then we're gonna hang it somewhere here or, or up there or whatever, near where it needs to be, uh, where the predators need to be stationed. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, well we're set up in the little workbench, little workbench thing um, outside of the shed and I've done a little bit of research online and, and a lot of them say use something like, you know, hardwood like um, oak and, and the likes are ash because it's uh, obviously very hardy and um, you don't want anything that is going to deter insects so um, like things like cedar and stuff like that they have a natural uh, deterrent um, so you don't want to use anything like that but what I've got here is a piece of cherry and we used to have a, a cherry tree over there um, where the shed is now <clears throat> it was non-fruiting so one of the first things we did when we moved in 20 odd years ago um, was to cut that down and I kept the timber I've kept all the wood um, that was any good so this is a piece that's what about uh, three inches round so what I'm going to do is going to create a, an apex like a roof at the top here and then we're just going to flip it up and we're going to bore out the inside and then we'll take a, a six and a half mil drill bit and just draw bore some holes at a, at a slight angle but um, let's get this cut off first to put a, like a roof on the top and then uh, We'll look to cover that with something so that it at least sort of keeps the rain of it as such, or we can see it in some way, shape, or form. So let's get to it. Let's cut it So that's going to form our 
our roof that we're going to have on top. So all I'm going to do is get this here. I'm going to take kind of a bit old-fashioned uh, now. Uh, we've got a bracing bit. Let's get you. Bring the camera in a little bit. a bit here way to hold this. Um, I think what I might have to do is take this into the shed and actually hold this in my vice in the shed and then uh, we can drill it from there. So I'll bring you back when we're in there. the game is it so um doesn't seem to be pulling down so the inside of this must be a little bit gone so um it's sharp enough to cut it i think what we'll do i've got some forstner bits um we'll go as far as i can as deep as i can with a forstner bit and then we'll change over to to that we need to go sort of two at least two thirds of the way down um in there so i'll bring you back uh, when i've got that sorted Okay, so that's working quite well, so uh, let's keep going. by hand it's slow work I mean I've been putting a uh, a drill bit down there as well with the uh, DeWalt putting a smaller bit down there just to loosen it up a bit inside now I've got like the top end done but it's hard going this cherry is a lot um, tougher than I thought it was or than I thought it would be so we are you know, I think we're nearly to the depth we've got yeah maybe another inch or so to go so yeah okay well as you can see we're back outside we've um bored our hole i think yeah we're somewhere down here so now what i've left to do is to just drill some holes now these need to be um at an angle so when the rain comes down from above it won't actually go into the holes so all i'm going to do is just put this on the workbench and we'll drill two or three we'll turn it a little bit two or three and the idea is that these go all the way into the middle and then there's obviously air flow um, around it so we must be looking at putting i don't know maybe half a dozen um or so maybe even <coughs> eight rows um or eight columns i should say around it with maybe three or four so uh, let's get to it Okay, 
and that's all of our holes drilled again. I'm not worried about getting it cleaned up, it's rough and ready, perfect. Try and keep it as, as natural as possible. So all I need to sort out now <clears throat> is a couple of bits of timber or something for the top that we can glue onto there just to keep the water off and then some way of fixing this to where the apple tree is. So I'm going to sort the roof out and um, what I'll do is I'll bring you back when we're back at the apple tree and ready for mounting. Okay. okay well as you can see all I've done is this is the original cane that came with the plant so I've just cable tied this uh, to it. I need to put another one on so it stops it from sliding about but I've just stuck a bit of ply on top and I'll just give it a quick coat of um, like a clear coat just to sort of give it some protection it's not the best I mean I had a screw break off here and the screws are rounded out but it's going to need to be replaced if I need to you know I can always take that off but there we have it so all the holes are there so I'm hoping that we'll get some insects in there so we're looking for things like ladybirds or lace wings things like that that will hopefully come along and you know kill all this off um, what I'll do for the rest of today is uh, I'll go down this manually and you know clear these all off I mean it's absolutely covered unfortunately um, this is a Brayburn apple um, and the whole reason for put it here and you know outside the office window is that I can see you know it growing which is a bit nice to have the uh, sort of fruit there once it comes and then uh, you know harvest that fruit when it's ready to be harvested so we do have a I think we got one apple uh, down there I'm just about to see it I think that's the only one we got this year we had none last year um, so if I get one apple this year that'll be a bonus really but hopefully this will work, this will get some insects and some, you know, say lace wings or earwigs or whatever in. And um, I did a bit of research online with regards to placement of uh, these sort of insect hotels. And it basically needs to be at the same level as the vegetation. Now being as that my tree is, you know, at least two foot off the floor uh, where the first branches are. I thought I'd stick it right in the middle. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but I want to try everything really, see if I can get this tree back to you know where, where it deserves to be really, um, and not covered in woolly aphids. I don't really want to use chemicals because of the we do have um, bees visit the garden and butterflies visit the garden, albeit you know not loads. Um, but I'd rather try and do something more natural than just you know go and put loads and loads of chemicals on the plant and uh, kill off other things that you know don't necessarily need to be killed off so um, but this is a you know such an invasive bug um, maybe next year I'll have to try and catch it a little bit earlier but yeah so that's all, yeah, that's all I need to do is um, maybe give this another cable tie or leave it where it is maybe tiny it up a little bit and um, cut them towels off and we're done so anyway guys thanks a lot for uh, coming along and watching me making this insect hotel now maybe give it a go great um, little project for the kids to be involved in as well I'm sure they would love to do something like that anyway thanks for watching